Catherine Howell is the author of the Detective Alan Marconi crime series. Her work has won awards and is published in multiple countries and languages. She teaches workshops in creative writing subjects, including editing and suspense. So thank you so much for joining us, Catherine. Thank you. It's great to um, have you teaching at QWC this year, particularly um, with the experience that you have in crime writing. Oh, thanks so much. I really, um, I really enjoy teaching actually and, and, you know, meeting other writers and seeing what they're working on and, you know, we all feed off each other's enthusiasm and energy. It's just fantastic. Your workshop that you're giving, uh, which is in Rockhampton, is uh, Murder You Wrote. So you're sort of giving a, a bit of an insight into murder mysteries and ghost stories and thrillers. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if you could give us your top tips for writing crime without being cliché. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, the most important thing is to know the genre well. So read as widely in it as you can because, um you know, if you come to it fresh and you write a story, you might think it's a fantastic story, but it's actually very cliché because uh, all the readers of it have seen it all before. Um, so you need to make sure that you know what's already out there in the genre and you know the boundaries within your work, uh, within which you're working. Um, and I think also it's important to, you know, you can pay attention to the news and, and see what's happening in the crime world out there, why people are doing the things that they do, even though... Um, you know, in real life, people do crazy things and, and horrible things for very little reason, and that's not going to fly in fiction. You need really good motivation, and that, I think that's the main thing. Um, if your character is going to commit a murder or do some other crime, he or she needs to have really sound reasons for doing that. So it, it can't be in like in real life where sometimes people are just a little crazy. No, it's it's hard to get away with that, or you know, because they were they just felt angry in that moment and they did something. It's um, you know, crime readers are looking for a good strong reason, and and it, that has to support the whole the length of the story or the book. So it's got to be sound. What would you consider to be cliche in crime writing? Like, what would you you avoid? Um, I think I think serial killers can be problematic. You know, there's that's been done a lot before, and unless you can find a new way to to tweak that or twist that, um, you know, because I, I have heard a lot of people say, oh, I'm sick of the serial killer thing. Um, and I think I think the, you know, the old standard of the private eye, you know, the, the noir story with the, the private eye in his office with a bottle of whiskey and then a tall blonde woman walks in and, you know, you can't start with that unless you're going to take it somewhere really interesting and different. That's why a lot of people turn to doing true crime, isn't it? Because, you know, sometimes real life is stranger than fiction. Yeah, that's right. And there's, um, you know, there's, there's so much going on out there. And to explore those reasons why those people do those things. Um, and, yeah, because when it's true crime, you can say, well, this really happened. I'm not making this up. I'm not, um, you know, he really did kill her for a, a can of Coke or something. <laughs> it's, you know, you don't have to get it, make it plausible for a reader. Hmm. What other top tips do you have in terms of, of crime writing? Because, I mean, the like, course that you're doing is, is not just based on, on crimes. You, you also had, had um, talked about, you know, ghost stories and thrillers. What do they all sort of have in common? I, I think the main quality really is suspense. And um, suspense in fiction is one of my favourite subjects. I did a master's degree uh, and I researched that topic. And um, because before that I had a, a manuscript that was my agent said didn't work because there was no suspense. So I set out to learn all about it and work out how I could fix that manuscript. Um, and so it's, it's because it's really that quality that keeps the reader reading. So without suspense, a reader's going to put your book or story down. So all those stories, and in fact every story, romance or whatever, needs to have suspense. It, it's critical. Do you find that a lot of crime stories happen over a very short period of time as opposed to other stories which might happen over four or five, six months? Um, that's a good question. I know my stories seem to, my novels happen over a short period of time. Um, and I, I guess one reason is you want to keep up the pace and momentum and it's hard to say, well, you know, two months went by and nothing happened. You need to get it all, um, you need to keep the pace up really. So, um, um you know, keep the, the reader on that roller coaster of the story. I suppose it's like when you write dialogue, you know, dialogue isn't a true representation of how people speak. It's a condensed version that mm-hmm. gets the, the story and the point across. So, I mean, you're, you're not writing true crime here. You're trying to get a condensed version of things into, into one 
mm-hmm. time period. So it's 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 permissible to have that shorter time. Yeah, that's right. And it, it's you know, and it's it's in the, it happens in the same way that that all authors tweak their true research. So um, you know, I mean, you have a detective and a crime novel who's working on just that case, and in reality, that it's much more common that they working on multiple cases at once. You know, they come to work in the morning, they take a statement on one case and go to court for another case and talk to a witness on a third case, um, which isn't going to happen, which isn't going to work properly in a story. So it's all about what works to make the book um, entertaining and absorbing for the reader, really. You talked about being a, doing a master's in suspense. What is the What are the main things that you need to keep that suspenseful feeling in a story? Well, there's two main qualities. And first of all, the readers need to care about the characters. And secondly, those readers have to be uncertain and, and worried about what's going to happen to those characters. And um, there's, a, there's all these other techniques and um, methods that you can use to develop both of these things. But if those two elements aren't there, if the reader doesn't care about your character, it doesn't matter how fancy your plot is, they're not going to go for it. It's not going to absorb them. And it, at the same time, if, even if they care about the character but they know exactly what's going to happen, it's not going to absorb them either. When you say care about the character, do they sort of need to know a little bit about the background of the character or they just need to be likeable? Um, I think compelling is a more uh, is the word really rather than likeable. I mean, likeable certainly comes into it, but you can read a novel where a character, you don't particularly like a character, but they're so compelling that you can't stop reading. You want to find out what's going to happen and you know whether they'll achieve their goals and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but I, I guess in most mainstream fiction, likeable is important as well. Um, if you can get both of those things working together, then it's going to be good. Now, I know that there's probably no such thing as a quick writing exercise, but would you be able to give us a a potential writing crime writing exercise that people could do at home, Absolutely. seeing as they can't book into your to your workshop because it's full? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said before, characters are really the most important thing. If you get the characters and their motivation working right, then you've got a really strong basis for a good story. So um, this is one of the things that I talk about in the workshop, um, which I'll hold up to the screen here. Is that in focus? Can you see that? What I might... uh, Hold on. So the story is about blank space. Yeah. Who wants blank space goal Mm -hmm. because blank space motivation and stakes, but can't get because blank space obstacle Uh some of the things she'll do include blank space actions yes so this is a it's a really handy thing whether you're starting out on a story or you're part way through and you want to make sure things are working well because every car every story is about a character who wants something and the struggle that they um you know engage in to get that thing and and uh, to overcome the obstacle that's stopping them so and certainly um As I said, in crime fiction, characters need to have a really good motivation for what they're doing. So, um, you know, it helps to look at this and think, okay, well, you know, my story's about this character named whatever. Um, She has to have a goal and she has to really want that goal. There's got to be a lot at stake if she doesn't get it. She has to be well motivated to do everything that she can to get it. And, um, And the obstacle, you know, the bad guy in crime fiction needs to be equally as motivated. So, um... He, I'll, I'll use he for an example, he needs to have his own reasons for what he's doing. He can't just be in the story as a device to get in your main character's way. Um, and as I said before, especially if he's going to murder or hurt somebody, he, re- he needs to have really good motivation for doing that. And, of course, every good character, every bad character in a story thinks they have good reasons for doing what they're doing. So this little exercise sort of helps you make sure that those qualities are working properly in your story. A great thing to take away from that is that both the villain and the hero need personal and external stakes. They do. They really do. Um, you know, I read a lot of aspiring manuscripts where they're, you know, a cop character might be doing the investigating case because it's their job, but that's not enough. They need to have, you know, emotional reasons for doing what they're doing. Um, or, you know, if it's an amateur private eye character, they need to have something more than just curiosity because you'd never put yourself into danger for curiosity and you certainly wouldn't, um, you know, risk your life um, to solve a case just out of curiosity. Uh, I suppose in, in things like crime shows, um, they, the way that they do it, they can't, you know, obviously the main the main character or the detective can't be personally involved in every case that they do in a, in a TV show, but they have their personal 
struggles at the same time as the the detective struggles that uh, tend to at a lot of points intersect because they affect each other affect being able to do things in your personal life or your professional life and vice versa Mm. but you'll notice i mean a lot in, in crime shows you know the detectives have emotional issues maybe they failed to save somebody in the previous week's show so they're more motivated to save the person this week or you know, they're, they're trying to work out these, their own issues um, in solving the cases. But you're right, because the TV show is so limited in scope, they have to, um, you know, get on with the story, really, and compress it into that sort of 45-minute um, time period. Thank you so much for taking the time out to have a chat with us, Catherine. Thank you. 